Now I'm in front of the Sensation Building in Vienna, and yes, I'm here to see their most famous work of art, um, Beethoven Fries by Gustav Klimt, and it's a total work of art, or in German, Gesamtkunstwerk, and it depicts, you know, human longing for happiness in a world that is dark and problematic, only to find that in the arms of work of art, poetry, music, and love. So follow me in. Let's go see. Once you enter the succession building, turn left and go downstairs. The freeze is kept in a temperature controlled room. But first, I have a question for you. Which three composers are associated with Beethoven freeze? Well, the first one is Beethoven himself, of course. Gustav Klimt painted the frieze specifically for the exhibition of this Beethoven sculpture by Max Klinger, which is now in Leipzig, by the way, it's not in the succession. The painting was actually meant to last for the time of the exhibition only, as Klimt painted it using light materials, but luckily the whole thing was preserved and that means we can enjoy its magnificence today. The second composer associated with the frieze is Gustav Mahler and Mahler was responsible for the music program of the exhibition and during the reception for the sculptor Max Klinger, Mahler conducted the final movement of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony and there's even a theory out there that the knight in the shining armor seen on the frieze may depict Mahler himself. And the third composer is Richard Wagner. And this is because Gustav Klimt painted the frieze based on Wagner's interpretation of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. And now that we know a bit of a background, let's go in and see the frieze. Once you're in, pick up the headphones and enjoy the painting with the background music of the fourth movement of Beethoven's Symphony No. 9. Now let's try to understand what the frieze is about and let's start our story from the first panel. Here we see floating genii in horizontal plane symbolizing yearning for happiness. These genii are protective spirits according to the Romans. Follow along and we then see a naked woman standing and in front of her a naked couple kneeling with their hands clasped, begging the knight in a shining armor for help. Above his head, the knight has figures of ambition on the left, holding a green laurel wreath, and the red-haired compassion on the right. This is basically saying that a person who will offer this resolution for the sickness of humanity is driven not only by ambition to do so, but also by great compassion to the suffering of humanity. Yearning then continues and in the next panel we'll see many symbols of darkness. And the main figure is the ape-like Typhius spanning two-thirds of the whole wall as he has eagle wing and coil of snake as his tail. His three daughters, the Gorgons, are on his right and the most famous of these is of course Medusa. Above the three daughters, there's also a group of women, sickness, madness, and death, symbolizing both the physical and mental aspects of suffering of the world. To the left of Typhius are three female figures, lust with red hair, self-indulgence, the blonde, and intemperance or gluttony with large belly. And a bit further to the right, we see pale and disheveled grief. And there's a theory that this might be referring to syphilis. Here on the top right corner, we see the figure of yearning emerging again floating away from the dark forces, symbolizing that despite all the darkness, she managed to overcome everything. Isn't this deep? But how did she, and for that matter, how can we as humans overcome all these darkness? 
the next wall offers the answer, and that answer is art. Here we see a female figure holding a book of poetry, and if you look closely, she's also playing a lie. It's worth noting that the Greeks do not read poetry, but sing them, which is what she's doing. Now, in my opinion, the next wall, which is actually an empty wall, is the most important of the whole Beethoven frieze. It's where you are transformed to the culmination of this total work of art and into paradise. Why? Well, the empty space here is meant to be where Max Klinger's Beethoven statue stands, which means you draw your eyes from the female figure down to Beethoven. And feel the transformation within yourself, and arrive at the climax on the last wall. Now you can see that those yearning female figures are no longer floating horizontally, but now in vertical plane, meaning that the yearning has been fulfilled and the answer has been found through art. Here we see a choir singing Beethoven Symphony Number no. Nine in a garden. The text to this last movement of Beethoven is based on Schiller's Ode to Joy, which contains the word "this kiss to the whole world," and for that we see two humans intertwined in a passionate kiss. It is meant to symbolize harmonic unification of all the arts. That pure love and art are the two salvations for all the unhappiness in 